hope to have good news or at least easy news I guess the mounting that I used to put the 800 in the Polaris with this plate on the bottom through the bolt holes the 600 looks to have the same bolt holes so hopefully we'll just move that plate on over to there and then we should be able to just put her right in once I get new carb boots, I noticed while I was swapping this out, the carb boots, or I guess throttle body boots, and this are cracked, but we'll get this moved over, and then I'll wait till I get the boots so I don't got to pull the engine it out 800 times to put it in there. The holes look to be inch, inch and a half farther over, so I'm going to have to re-drill these for that and then should work out just fine after that. Alright, got it all mounted to the 600. As you can see the difference between the 600 and the 800 here, all the old bolt holes are where it mounted to the 800 and well where the bolts are is 600. So the 600 has the same thread pitch and everything holes in the bottom of the case but they're narrower in both directions uh, I just left the one set of bolts the ones that beats the rear of the engine that sits on the sled in the same spot and just moved the what would be the front bolts back hopefully that'll keep it in good alignment with the throttle bodies and everything that's already in there and I'm just gonna have to wait until I get it in the sled to see how that works for clutch alignment and all that so be the next step and see where I'm at and there's a little bit of slop in these holes so the brackets kicked a little bit which might have to try loosening them and adjusting that a little bit but you generally want your clutch to be a couple of degrees forward angle from the uh, secondary I mean straight up's okay but most things say you know I think it's two to three degrees so that when you're under load and it's pulling on the uh, engine mounts it doesn't go negative essentially or it's not kicked at an angle You're supposed to have that slight bit positive so that when it's under load it actually sits straight but we'll have to see how that goes when it gets in there the Articat 600 out of a powder special is all in the 2012 Polaris fits in there a lot nicer and easier than the 800 does um, the only real change that was done was with the engine mounts which I showed earlier I had to reposition other than that pretty much everything else bolted back in the 600 ECU went where the 800 ECU was 600 coil 800, you know all that the where's that and then I also got a 600 pipe the 800 pipe on it it didn't seem to want to run very good at all which could be expected I thought it would do better than it did but I got a found a Polaris 600 pipe and somehow it runs a lot better seems to run just fine even though this section here I should have gotten video before I wrapped it all up but I was having camera SD card issues I had to get a new SD card because the old one got corrupted and wouldn't record anymore for the camera but anyways this section of pipe here is off of the old 800 exhaust pipe and then there's a section here actually to here off of the 600 Polaris 600 pipe and then from here back is a 600 pipe as well but there's about a what was it two three inch section that got taken out of here because the pipe wouldn't fit right with this motor and 
that can and all that so cut that section out and actually kind of pie cut it <clears throat> and weld it and have this rotated to where it would line up properly with the can and that's just a stock Polaris 800 can that's just a stock Polaris 800 can I'll take the bolted in. It's got the loop here for the two other hoses that this engine doesn't have. So let's put a hose loop. <clears throat> I've had bad luck with those caps. I may have covered this in some of the 800 videos, but the rubber caps you put on, I've had issues with them just cracking on the end and then they'll just spray fluid out. Or the coolant out. Went ahead and put the hood on and just thought I'd show you real quick firing it up in the tack and all that fun type of stuff this is the only kill switch that it has now because the way the uh, powder special 600 kill works it has basically the two wires that come out that went to the kill switch and then they just connect so that's all this does but the way the harness the hood harness was wired up before to the key and everything that was working with the 800 is the minute you plug that in it would just kill it so that key's just for show now, just kind of plugging a hole. All right, and the old powder specials I had always started second pull with the EFI, but I just had it running to move stuff around, get the Geo Metro in here and let it thaw out so I can do an engine rebuild on that. But so I just had it running, moving around because of that. So I'll probably start first pull. <laughs> As you can see the high beams, low beams work and the uh, heated grips actually work as well. I just followed the or used the Arctic Cat chassis wiring harness with its voltage regulator and everything and just ran the wire that normally came out of it up to power those. I ended up putting the Arctic Cat voltage regulator right down there on the end of that foot well. Got to plug it in, tie it up, and you know, the wire that comes out of that just runs up into the hood harness, the Polaris hood harness. Plug right up in there. And runs the headlights and the um, grip warmers. Still got the Arctic Cat primary on it. I was wanting to use the Polaris one, which is on the 800 now, but the 800 is a 33 millimeter 110 taper, and the 600 is a 30 millimeter 110 taper. So if I wanted to ream the other one out, I could have used it on here. But since I did, and I haven't come across any for a good deal, it's on there. And then the belt is actually the the powder special belt. The Arctic Cat 020 just had to uh, adjust. The screw there to get it up and sitting right and then with the gearing of the Polaris or I guess it might not just be the Polaris but the way I want it to perform in the deep snow the uh, 600 has basically no power below like 6,000 rpm so the way the clutch was engaging it was engaging at about 4,000 and it would just kind of bog and be doggy and not want to get up until you've had it on for a while to work and that's a good way to get stuck in deep snow is not getting the power when you need it so I put a yellow 
white Arctic cat spring in there and that helped a bit but still wasn't quite doing it and then I still need the engagement up higher so I actually took an old Arctic cat purple spring that I have and you can see how the the ends cut there doing it on the cheap here the basically the flat ring on the end cut it off ended up cutting off both ends I did one put it in engagement performance wasn't where I want it and then did the other end and put it in and that got the engagement up to about 5,000 and it seems to really zip the track when it when you go like I want it to it doesn't do any of the it's not bogging it's just it's working the motor harder than it has the power for at that lower RPM I might re-gear it eventually and re set that up but this has the, the quick drive with the belt drive on it <clears throat> and with that quick drive setup it's not as easy as just buying a smaller top gear or a larger bottom gear and adjusting your chain slack they've got to match enough for the belt to fit right and a lot more expensive and all that so for now I'm just going to run with that and that engagement higher I mean ideally I would have preferred to have it geared down lower to where the engagement on the clutching and stuff could be a little different or even smaller drivers to give it the gear advantage it needs. For now, we're gonna run with that and we'll see how it works out. All right, and then the weights in the primary, I don't know why it had these weights in it because from what I can see looking at the air box on the old Arctic Cat is it gives you different weight part numbers and actual grams for different elevations. And I didn't see on there anywhere oh, I grabbed the wrong weight hang on let me get the right weight okay I didn't see anywhere on there where it said 54s were the right weight but these are what it had on it and they're heavier on the heel and lighter on the tip which I don't really care for I don't like the way especially on this 600 with not having a whole lot of bottom end power why it's going to want to shift out so early because the heavier heel will cause it to try to shift up the primary sooner in the rpm range so i put weights like this one only 47s that have the heavier tip on them to where it has higher shift force in the end of the rpm range which is where this engine makes all its power because even with the 54s in there and the two springs in there engaging at 5,000, it was still wanting to be boggy after, I don't want to, shouldn't say boggy, it's not really bogging. It was loading it too hard for the RPM range and stuff that it was in. Because it's just off 5,000, but again, there's not a whole lot of power with this motor down there. And it was just loading it too heavy. So just kind of, and then come up just like putting your car in too high of a gear so by going to the heavier tip it makes it a little lighter in the heel here it's nice and snappy and you hit it and it just goes and the rpms come up smoothly without any of that it's just once you get it it goes um only i have 47 and a half weights in it because they're just ones i happen to have here and it's topping out up at 8,000 according to the tack, but these older tacks could be off by a couple hundred, so I think we might be right in there because going from the, 50, the 54s as well, which is odd, we're also topping out at about 8,000, so the lighter weight should have brought it up more, but they didn't seem to, so. But we gotta get it out in some real snow and see because that was just in the driveway here in a couple of inches and on ice with the track just spinning away. And seeing where it goes. So once we get some load on it, it might actually go up higher, and maybe we'll have to put some more weight in it. But it's that right now. I need to take it out and take it for a good ride, and just see how she does. Um, see how everything performs. You know, maybe make some clutching adjustments. I'll probably bring some other weights because I got those 47s, and I've got some 50s. So I'll bring the 50s, and if it's over revving. <clears throat> put the 50s in it it's pretty easy to do done it a lot before just took a whole bag full of weights and 
actually at that time I took weights, springs, I took uh, helixes for the secondary, the older style with the three-point helix and different springs and all that. And we just spent a day just riding around and just trying different stuff until we got what was ideal, which I did change the spring in the secondary on this as well. I actually put a, uh, a stiffer spring in it. So we'll see how that comes out too. I might have to change that. But for right now, it all seems good. Um, we're going to throw the hood on it and then we'll get some more video. And next time you guys see it, hopefully, it'll be ripping up some snow.